What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to another solo episode with your girl, Stacy. I don't need to say my name because you guys already know it. So let's move on. Um, anyway, I'm really excited to jump into the topic for this episode because this is one of those topics that is actually a very, very big topic, but we treat it as it's small or we treat it like it's an everyday thing. Well, it is an everyday thing, but we treat it like it doesn't take a lot of work to create it and experience it. And that word is confidence. Confidence. I'm not going to go into a definition right now, but I just think it's one of those vast ideas that we kind of say like, oh, they should get more confident or just have more confidence. But as I've been in my growing journey, I, I really started recognizing the difference between confidence, ego, self-awareness, and what it actually takes to reside in a confident existence, to be a confident person. So I first want to introduce you guys to this book. It's called Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. It is an amazing book. I first read it, I can't remember if it was 2018 or 2019, but it is one of the books that is on repeat in my life. And this book definitely exposed so much to me about ego and about confidence and about not just the difference, but about really understanding what it takes to be a confident person. Like I truly broke down while reading this book. Cause I was like, wait, I, I mean, I thought I was confident, but I'll take you through that journey within myself. I was a very confident teenager. I definitely don't remember feeling like not to say I never felt insecure, but I definitely was, I was confident. I wore heels to high school. Like I thought, you know, I love my outfits. I had, I, I could never repeat an outfit. I was really unafraid to like be friends or talk to my teachers or like make new friends or talk to new people or try things and mm, try. I was going to say try things and fail. I think I was good at it. I got worse at that in my twenties, but I was pretty good at it in high school, just like trying stuff and being around because I, I was like, oh, I'm cool. I'm a fun girl, like whatever, it'll be fine, right? So I just felt like I was a really confident teenager. And as I got older, especially in my twenties, I would say probably like mid twenties, like between 26 and 28, I think that's when my confidence started being like, whoa, like this is harder. <laughs> this is a lot harder to be confident. Uh, around that time for myself, I will say I was comparing myself a lot more than I even like, man, I hate comparing myself. Like it really bothers me because I'm like, wait, what a waste of time. Like stop worrying about what other people are doing, but it's human nature and it happens and it definitely was happening. And so I was like, okay, especially in the industry I was in, a lot of my job was being liked and at least trying to get jobs was being liked and having a talent was one thing, but do people like you? Do they want to work with you? Do they want to be around you? And that was cool because I always felt like, okay, cool. Like I'm a kind of person. I, I love to be in a um, environment where I'm very collaborative or we can work together, things like that. But it's weird when, again, the art of being liked was a part of getting the job. That's like, that's cool for sometimes, but sometimes it's like, this is kind of annoying because like, you liking me is irrelevant. I just, I'm good at the job. So I definitely saw moments of, of insecurity popping up a lot. And when I started reading Ego's the Enemy, I really recognize why. So I want to call out a couple of definitions that the book gives me, gives us. Um, so ego is an unhealthy belief in our own importance, according to the book, Ryan Holiday's book, Ego's the Enemy, which I love that definition. I'm going to say it one more time. An, un an unhealthy belief in our own importance. This definition of self-confidence came from the internet, a feeling of trust in one's ability, qualities, and judgment. Also, I put another def, I look for another definition. It says confidence means feeling sure of yourself and your abilities, not in an arrogant way, but in a realistic, secure way. Confidence isn't about feeling superior to others. It's acquire inner knowledge that you're capable. As I was or have been on my journey of confidence and continuing to recognize like, what does it mean to be confident? I see where I played myself and I don't want you to play yourself. So a lot of what we think can be confidence. I wouldn't say it's, it's that it's ego, but it can be a self, it can, it can be a lack of self-awareness. Being confident in what you know is not the highest level of confidence where I have now garnered so much confidence and so much more confidence is my ability to learn my ability to apologize, my ability to be wrong, my ability to try again, my ability to unlearn and relearn. 
that is where I built my confidence. I didn't have that version of confidence in my 20s because I was confident in what I knew. I was so confident in what I knew. And so when people challenge that, I'd be like, wait, no, but like, this is what I know and this is what it stands for me and this is what's important. And it, it definitely does not leave room for learning, but that's that if we go deeper, that's about fear. You know, my fear of looking stupid, my fear of not knowing, my fear of not being smart enough. That was a big fear that I had to unravel for so much of my 20s. Um, and I'm sure that comes from high school with, you know, pre-AP classes and trying to be the smartest and the best and whatever all of that was. But trying to prove your smartness through all your knowing that isn't really rooted in anything but the belief system that you have. It doesn't mean that it's untrue all completely, but it's like belief systems change, right? And I have just found myself so much more secure in my ability to be in the unknown, to live in the gray area, to be okay with not knowing. That was something I, I didn't even have the skill to do. I didn't even have the opportunity to do that um, in my twenties, I would say. And so to have now to have a better relationship with the gray area, to have a relationship with the unknown, I'm like, Oh, and to walk around and still exist and be moving in like spiritual confidence. And I, I just mean recognizing that we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. So all this stuff that we think that we have garnered all these success stories and all of our accolades and all of our accomplishments, they're very fickle and they're very, one dimensional and they're very this reality. It doesn't mean they're not important. It just means that they cannot be the fullness of our confidence, right? Because things change all the time. If you're fully, if you're only confident in your ability to be a runner and then you get in a, God forbid, a car accident and you can't run anymore, are you less of a person? Are you not important anymore? Is, is your gift completely over? Are you completely over? Are you done? Are you, you know what I mean? Like that's how quickly things can change. My producer asked me a question that I want to ask and answer on the podcast. So she asked, how have you embraced loving your story and being confident in your story? And I feel so excited to be able to answer that with my learning of judgment towards myself and my, my ability to finally be able to at least remove self-judgment as the first place to go right? When I failed at something, whatever failure means to us, right? When I didn't accomplish something the way I wanted, or when I was bad at something, or I didn't know something, I was so self-judgmental and so hard on myself to the point that my confidence was built based on like, okay, this is the things I accomplished, or these are the things I have done, or this is the skills I have. But to me, something about that never felt strong enough. It was like, this is not feel real. This feels like it depends on an external experience versus internal, right? And so as I've been able to zoom out of the human experience and zoom out of my experiences and recognize myself as a spiritual being truly and deeply and continuing on that journey and have seen myself more as like a person who's sitting in the seat of awareness and and watching Stacy experience things and watching Stacy learn things and oh Stacy tripped on that okay let's see if she's going to get up and figure this out like I know I'm talking about myself in third person but that has truly built so much of my confidence because I don't have to go to self-judgment first. I can remember, oh, I'm having a, an experience right now. I I am learning something in this moment. I am doing something that is going to teach me something else that I'm experiencing contrast, experiencing things I don't like also helps me learn the things I do like. It helps me build clarity and clarity builds confidence. And when you're clear about you being like being who you are outside of the things you do being, you know, like discovering the soul that you are discovering your intentions, discovering the journey you want to be on, on a soul level, it truly takes you out of these are the things I can do and these are the places I've been and these are the people I know, right? Those are all exciting and amazing. And again, while we're on this earth, we want to achieve and succeed and we want to learn and we want to grow and we want to, you know, get to the highest heights. And that's a part of the journey and we should all do that. But there's something so beautiful about doing that while recognizing that this is just one part of our experience, that there's many other experiences to come. And so our confidence should be built in the fact that we are literally built to do this experience as well as multiple other experiences, that we are built to 
make mistakes and we are built to learn from our mistakes and we're, we're built to like, to teach ourselves new skills to say, oh, okay, I used to be self-judgmental. Okay, cool. I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna try this. We have the ability to be in the driver's seat of our lives. We're not out of control. That, oh my God, the confidence I built in that reality, that understanding, and that took a long time to understand. I mean, what I just said is a very big statement. It takes, that is something you have to tell, I have to tell myself over and over and over again, and I have to relive and I have to re-experience and I have to remind myself, which is a part of our human journey. We're here to remind ourselves of how excellent we are, how beautiful we are, how big we are. And all of that made me realize like confidence is earned. It's not just given. Ego is given. Ego feels like entitled and I should and I would and I did and I, you know, that's ego. But confidence is earned. Confidence is earned in the moments that we have the courage to try again, to work with somebody that we're not sure it's going to work out, but we we walk into the unknown. Confidence is bravery. And mind you, I did not say fearlessness because I do not count myself as a fearless person. I definitely experience fear, but the courage and the bravery to say, okay, hello, fear, you, me, fear, we're all going to walk into this experience together and we're going to kill it. You fear cannot do too much talking because when you talk, I get a little, (laughs) you know, you distract from the mission. But since you always feel like you have to be here, fear, ego, they can, they're one and the same. And you feel like you're here to protect me. Appreciate you being here. Sit in the back seat. Don't say nothing. Put your seatbelt on. That's what I want us to be doing with our fear and our egos. They, they exist and, and to say that they will never um, be a part of our journey it would be a lie. But to say that they are the driver's seat, absolutely not. And to say that they, we can build any of our confidence out of the things that our ego tells us is also a lie. Another question my producer asked me was, do I ever have to catch myself from minimizing my story or preventing myself from sharing my story because I think it's unnecessary or unworthy? 100%. I definitely think that in, in my journey, I have learned how to, I'm, I'm a big personality, a big person. And I love that and cherish that about myself. But I also know when to, oh, I can be a little hard on myself in terms of how I'm sharing my story. What am I saying? Is it really important? Do these people really care? Blah, 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 for sure. And so I've caught myself multiple times. I, I st- I'm sure I'll still catch myself in the future because that's a part of the journey. But I love that where my mind goes, it's like, hey, okay, this is an old practice. You're in the new practice now. Hey, this is old. This is an old story. You're in the new story. Hey, this is something that you've already healed from or that you're healing from. You can move on from this. You can let this part of your story go. The ego sometimes, I will still say that can be an ego thing too, holding on to a version of your story to to continue to protect you, to continue to say, hey, like this is why we don't do this or this is why we, you know, and a lot of it is rooted in fear as well. And yeah, just fear of being seen, fear of being heard, fear, fear of really being being known for who and what you are and then being confident in that. And so I've definitely experienced that. And, you know, the way I combat it is like, I just told you guys, like a lot of my self-talk, I'm, I'm always working on my self-talk. I, right now I'm really trying to, I have this ability to like take that worry and turn it into well, well being well. But what I'm, my next part of the journey is not needing the worry at all. Right. Because I'll be like, man, I can't believe. Oh, God, that was amazing. Never mind. It can happen so fast. And I'm like, OK, cool. It's happening faster. But the next part of my journey is not even needing to worry, not even needing to depend on the fear, not even needing to look back at that part of the story because it's not going to be relevant anymore. As I've gotten older and also been more willing to go on the journey where I'm like, OK, hold up. What if you're not confident? What if everything you're confident in is crap. What if there are other internal things that you need to work on to actually live out a confident version of yourself? And I've written down a couple things that were so, that I've just noticed about myself that has really been encouraging. I have learned to set boundaries. Now boundaries, we, uh, we need to do a whole episode on boundaries because boundaries are very personally, they're not easy and they're, they're difficult to maintain, but they're also difficult to experience while you're, you're telling somebody like for me, I'm really close to my family and I moved to Houston. So I could, I really want to experience my highest self in the same city that I was born and raised in. I lived in LA for eight years. I still have my place there. So I can and might go back at any time, but for now I really, I wanted to live in Houston. I want, I was here a lot during the pandemic and I wanted to just experience a new level of confidence. I wanted to say, okay, 
You can be confident out there. What about confident in your own hometown? What about building your authority and your self-worth and your self-trust in the same place that, you know, your family is? Because that's a different level. It's hard to say, hey, I can't do this or I can do this and, and stick to that while you are, you know, wh while it's difficult to tell the people you love no to certain things that you just are not comfortable with or you can't do anymore or learning to not overextend myself or learning to be honest with myself about my time or what I need. That all took a lot of work and is still taking work because that's not, that's not a one year thing, but I have significantly grown in that journey and it has truly helped me build my confidence. I'm like, oh wow, like I said what I meant and I meant what I said. Look at that. Like I really held myself accountable and I also held other people accountable. I did have decreased a lot in my FOMO. Part of why I moved to Houston was also to say, hey, you've been in the industry, you're still in the industry, but what happens if you're not in the city? Does that mean you can't be successful? Does that mean you can't move forward? Does that mean, what does that mean? Let's go find out what it means. Let's go find out if you're like, oh, okay, no, I really do want to be in LA or no, I, I, I don't need to be there. Like I can do, you know, and obviously the pandemic um, allowed us to be doing a lot more things virtually. And that was a, also something that helped make that decision of like, okay, let's just see what happens if you don't have to be here. You know, do you still feel confident? I've been so much more disciplined in my health. Oh my God. My cousin Cindy, like she put me on to some health stuff starting from 2020 and it broke me open. And to see myself like commit to the things I've committed to going vegan for two, for two years was not something I planned. Um, and even now I'm not vegan anymore, still don't eat dairy, but I did end up bringing fish back into my diet and I just started eating chicken after going to Nigeria in December because nobody cared that I was vegan there. <laughs> I love them, but no. So as I was doing that, I just, just watching like even how I eat and what I'm eating and I, I, I haven't had juice in so long. Like I, I have not had juice in so, that's crazy to me. Like that to me builds confidence. Like I actually, I said I wanted to do something and I did it. And that was a different level of confidence. It wasn't like, this is a, it wasn't just an, about an accomplishment. It was, I am trying to serve myself from the inside out and, and inside my body and keeping my body healthy and, and doing the things that my body needs to be healthy is more of an inside out thing. And it's like, that's how I externally, I'm externally experiencing it through like good skin and feeling healthy and feeling mobile and feeling energized. But that was all inside out stuff. Right. It wasn't, I mean, I really still need to be working out more. That's a whole nother story, y'all. But I see all that to say, like being able to be disciplined in my health has been such a confidence booster. Um, also, ooh, just validating my self-experience. I really had a hard time thinking, okay, just because I've lived it, that means that's enough. Especially in Hollywood, like just the titles, there's so many different titles. And for a long time I was told myself I'm a producer. But I never said it out loud because I'm like, how, how, how nobody has experienced that version of me or whatever the case is. Right. And it's like being able to validate, hey, you're living, you're producing your podcast. You are pushing ideas forward. You know how to sit in with other people and help them produce their ideas like you're a producer. That took a time because it took sitting in that experience. It took humility in that experience. It took asking a lot of questions. It took being uncomfortable. It took learning and being confident in my ability to learn versus just the ability itself and say, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm good at doing this. So I must be this. Like, it was a little longer than that. And I appreciate that because I feel like now that I can own that title, I really own it. Like I said earlier, confidence is earned. It's something that I also learned through the ego is the enemy book. When he, when I read that, I was like, wow, that's, it's not such a bad thing. It doesn't mean that I'm working hard for it. It means I'm going to build it from the inside out truly. And I've always said, when you look good, you feel good. I think dressing up and making sure our hair is nice and like the outside aesthetic looks beautiful as well. I definitely believe that feels the inside, but it doesn't replace the inside. And so that's super important. I'm, again, I'm a hundred percent down for you look good, you feel good. So if, if you are on your confidence journey and rebuilding or building it now, you can definitely start with some of those external things and just make sure, okay, listen, like, how does my house look when I wake up or how does my apartment look or how do I take care of myself on the outside and continuing to be build the, the things on the inside, your spiritual life, your, um, your relationships, your judgment and your compassion for yourself, the ways that you learn, knowing how to hone in on that, being willing to address the way you see life and see where there's room for 
learning and where there's room for you to really own your experience and own your expertise. So I just feel like that all breeds a level of confidence that I am so much more excited to embark on. And I can't wait to continue this journey. I don't know where you guys are at with this journey, but this is something that is really, really important to me because again, I think it's something that we talk about that is like one of those throwaway comments, confidence. Like it's something small, but it's actually very, very big. It's a very, very big idea. And it's bigger, it's big in theory. And so the experience of it is even bigger to me. And so to really experience confidence, these are some things that have been really helpful for me in my journey. I definitely suggest Ego's the Enemy as a, as a great book. Um, the Subtle Art of Not Giving an F is another great book that I love that really nurtured this part of my journey. So just wanted to share those things as well. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for listening and for watching. You guys are amazing. And I'll see you soon.